Hello everybody, my name is Shai and this is the weekly reading for the week of May 22nd. I'm recording this on Sunday the 22nd and I gotta say I am super happy to be here doing a reading in Gemini season because for me I felt the shift so strongly. It's now life is kind of like a cover girl commercial. It's easy, breezy, beautiful or at least it can be if you allow it to be. I feel like this Gemini energy it it really can live up to my hopes of last week where this gives us a really beautiful break to kind of establish ourselves, rem remember who we really are and like ground into our own energy and kind of get a break from all of this really intense <laughs> intensity, all of this intensity that we've been um, handling and releasing and rising to the occasion of and all of that. This is we can really use this energy as just a break to just have, to live the good life for a month or so. Um, I, I feel like if you don't have a lot of prominent Gemini in your chart, that tuning into this energy, it could be a little harder to find. Um, if you happen to be like a sun or moon or maybe Venus Gemini, it's gonna be a little easier for you to, to feel this. Um, because you know it's lighting up our, our charts like that, but it, it is there. It is there if you if you can seek it, and especially with Gemini energy, it, it's you know there's a reason why like traditional astrologers always say like Gemini rule like Gemini in the third house that they rule like short distance travel and like siblings and stuff like that, um, because Gemini has this energy of like your immediate environment, like the immediacy. That's why this is such a nice break because with the Taurus Scorpio energy we were dealing with, it was just like, uh, it, it was so much of the unknown and so many fears, but then grounding those fears into reality and it like wasn't fun, right? Um, but with this Gemini energy, it's like, what is really right in front of you? And it, it can be this feeling of like, get really, really obvious, like allow yourself to get super obvious to the point where you might, it might feel superficial, right? Sometimes Gemini gets this bad rap of being kind of superficial, um, but that's only like really one aspect of, of Gemini energy, right? It, it's not that it is superficial by nature, it's that Gemini is interested in everything and anything that includes the superficial. So the, that's just one aspect of it. But um, like allow, allow things to be obvious and allow things to be easy. Um, we're, we're getting a break from like delving into these Plutonian, Scorpion, like, Scorpio depths and all of that and allow things to be obvious, allow things to be easy. Um, just keep allowing things to be light and easy and breezy like a CoverGirl commercial, okay? And so it, it, this was really strange when I was, you know, trying to write my notes. Uh, it was like my hand suddenly was writing in weird ways. I don't know if you can see here, like I was trying to you know, write so that when I'm, once I'm doing the reading, I can remember what I'm talking about. And when I went to write Tuesday the 24th, I some, like I wrote the, the four all tiny. <laughs> and then I came down here and I, my hand wrote Mars with this weird M and that's not typically how I write my M's. And then as I kept writing, I kept finding myself like writing weird things. Like my hand was not, my hand and my brain, my hand in my mind, my hand and my verbal mind were not like, there was this massive disconnect. My hand was trying to do its own thing, almost as if it was, I don't know, it what it, it wasn't like my my mind was not controlling my hand very well. And that's interesting because today Mercury, you know, the planet ruling communication and all that, is retrograding back into Taurus, so leaving Gemini behind and going back into Taurus. And this is, I, I don't I don't get like I, I've seen like a lot of doom and gloom kind of going around about this Mercury retrograding back into Taurus. I'm not really feeling. Feeling that I'm feeling like as long as you can keep your eye on the prize of tuning into the high, highest frequencies of Gemini energy, um, because that's where the sun is, right? It's like we want to focus on that, and if we can keep our focus, that's what I want to establish. Keep your focus on the highest frequencies of Gemini energy for the next month, because there are some like weird shifts and like weirdness going on behind the scenes, um, and they might erupt into the light of day, right? Like we have um, Venus is going to be squaring Pluto on Thursday, right? That So that brings Pluto in, and that could either be like Venus square Pluto, that could be fight day for couples, right? That could be wake up that morning when you look at your partner and just be like, we're going to fight today. Like this is good. <laughs> or, or this could be like world's best sex day, okay? Venus square Pluto, it can go either way. This, this There's this huge responsibility. The responsibility is on us, I feel like more strongly than ever to decide if, if this energy is going to manifest 
bright and sunny and shiny and wonderful or if it's going to drag us into another round of shadow work and it's like it's on you and here's the thing even if you do decide to go in for another loop of shadow work that doesn't mean that that was wrong or that that you failed to tune into the light maybe for some people right it's going to be relevant for them to do another loop of shadow work this month um, and th that that you have to discern that for yourself, right? Is this the time for another loop of shadow work or is it a time for like a playful break, right? That's on you and it is it, it is like to a large extent your decision, right? If, if you want to just put the shadow work on the back burner for now and like tackle it next time this energy comes around, you can do it then. Or if you want to get it out of the way now, you can loop through it now and get it out of the way now, but it's it's like your choice, your choice, your choice. How, how do you, what do you want to do with your energy this month, right? For all of Gemini season. So that's this this underlying theme of you get to decide how, how you're tuning into this energy. It's all available for you. Um, yeah, so with the Mercury retrograding back into Taurus, to me that is allowing us, like, everything we just went through in, in Taurus season, right? Especially with the last Scorpio eclipse, everything that we just went through, um, this Mercury going back over it is allowing us to kind of see it with new eyes, to see everything we just went through with new eyes, right? Maybe the complete picture isn't going to be forthcoming right yet, but um, it's like you're going to be like, wow, I can see, I can start to see how this is working out. Wow, I can start to see how that actually made sense. Or wow, this is actually going to turn out to be my benefit. Or like, wow, you know, I'm really glad I got through that and just got it done. Now I've learned and, and blah, 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 right? We're, we're going to see everything with new eyes. <laughs> Prince of Swords and this particular Knight of Swords. Um, is a person who has just recently been through some kind of sacrifice. He's all bloodied, right? He's bloodied, but he's still standing strong, still standing strong, and he has a clearer understanding of what he's going to tolerate and what he's not going to tolerate, what he's going to allow himself to go through and what he's just not going to allow himself to go through ever again, right? He, he's beaten and bloody, but standing strong and confident and wiser, right? And wiser for the battle he just went through. So... Yeah, and he's also in a state of healing, right? The 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 battle is over. The battle is over, so it's continuing healing. For those of you who had um, like wounds ripped open during the full moon eclipse, the Scorpio full moon eclipse, still in that period of healing. And oh, this is going to be really good. So on Tuesday, um, Tuesday in North America, anyway, Mars it Mars. Okay, so now we know Gemini retrograde is real and my blah, 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 blah. my hand is not communicating with my brain. My mouth is not communicating with my brain. Moving ahead, <laughs> Mars is entering Aries, which is going to help with the healing because Aries, I mean, you might not think of Aries energy as healing energy, right? But it, it's when our Aries energy, that is the I am presence, that is the like inner flame, right? And when that is activated, it is healing. It is healing. And I'm reminded actually that Chiron, you know, the asteroid governing our core wounds, right? Our core wounds is transiting through Aries right now. That's taking like a few years long, I think. Um, so it's interesting at some point the sun is going to, or not the sun, the sun already did that. Mars is going to conjunct Chiron and Aries, not this week, but apparently that's, I'm making a mental note of that for myself to look into that later. Find out when Mars is conjunct Aries because or Mars is conjunct Chiron in Aries because I feel like this Mars entering Aries is just it's to light your light your fire right it's to light your fire and allow and further this healing that really is going to be coming from within from your own inner light as if you, your own inner fire can shine so bright that it 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 can heal you itself like by allowing your soul to shine bright inside of you and allow your flame to shine bright it does the healing it does the healing Three of Pentacles, balancing, balancing, and we have Metatron's cube up here. To me, this is a this is very interesting. To me, this depicts the balance between like the Earth plane and the higher realms. You are the balance point between the two, um, like balancing, like the alchemy happens in your inner flame, in your I am presence. The alchemy and the healing happens inside of you and it's that point of balance as if you are because you are like the fulcrum point, the, the like, can you see what my hand is doing? That's what it feels like. It's this point where everything goes, you, you are the point of singularity. You are the point of singularity between everything above us and everything below us, between the unseen and the seen, between the non-physical and the physical, right? Between transcendence and imminence, you are the singularity point. <sighs> I 
I want to skip ahead all the way to next Sunday. I mean, I'm probably going to be making a video next Sunday, right? If I don't make it next Sunday, it'll be almost certainly on next Monday. But I wanted, I included this because Mars is going to conjunct Jupiter and Aries next Sunday. And that is big expansive energy. That is our divine masculine, like going through a a pruning process and an expansion process. If you've heard me talk about Jupiter recently, I'm really vibing on how it, it's like Jupiter it, is this planet of expansion, right? And people are always talking about that, but I feel like what's overlooked often, and maybe it's because my Jupiter is in retrograde in my birth chart, so it's fun Jupiter energy functions a little bit more differently for me. So maybe this resonates more for people who have Jupiter retrograde, but it's like, it's not, Jupiter is not this unbridled expansion. It is this like pruning energy where things go to be pruned away, to be alchemized, to be cooked down. Um, and that allows the expansion. It's like Jupiter allows you to expand by making you lighter, by making you lighter, right? So next Sunday, and we're going to be feeling this all week, I think. I think that's, you know, because we have Mars entering Aries and basically as soon as Mars enters Aries, it's going to be aligning with Jupiter, right? It's going to be close. Jupiter just entered Aries. So Mars and Jupiter are close together and it's like allowing a purification and an alchemization and a upliftment of our div divine masculine energy. So um, I'm hearing like solar plexus, right? Anybody who's, um, who's, who has like, you know, struggles with their solar plexus going to be really healing to that. And it's also, this also is really, really good to be happening with this Gemini energy because Gemini, as I've been saying, it, it's, I mean, I, I, I have so many different things I could say about Gemini energy, but what is relevant for me the most right now is it's tuning into your own truth, right? To who you, who you really are on a soul level and what is really, really true for you, right? What is true for you and what is true for you right here, right now, right? Getting really focused on the self, the self, the self, the self, um, so to have Mars and Jupiter in Aries at the same time, that's like a different way of exploring the same type of self um, focus, the same type of self clarity, because Aries is the, the I am presence, the inner fire. And Gemini is a similar type of thing, but it's air energy, right? It's not fire energy. It's like the generation of perception almost I could say the generation of thoughts the generation of perception and the the truth of like who you are in the light the truth of who you are in the light so anyway we're going to be feeling that all week it, um and it's interesting the Gemini new moon <laughs> we're already like leading up to that that's coming next Monday so already by the end of this already already by you know next Saturday Sunday you're going to start to feel the energy of the Gemini moon I feel like it's going to be very um rather gentle which is going to be nice since our last two moons were so intense but I'm going to talk more about that next week um as you can see I'm all over the place Mercury retrograde um, like more, I feel like I'm more all over the place than usual. That's also also an example of Gemini energy because I feel it that Gemini like um, it's like it makes a thought there and 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 there. It's this. Uh, it's almost like a scatter shot, <laughs> like a scatter shot. If you're like in a paint paintball gun, um, right? You can like if you were to shoot paint, like a splatter of paint, a splatter of paint all over the place, right? Um, the paint splatter comes from one original source inside the barrel of the paintball gun. Um, and that, that would actually be Sagittarius, right? That's the opposite end of the Gemini Sagittarius spectrum. You have the origin point, the higher point, the or like the, um, un the unity point, which is Sagittarius. And then it all splats out all over the place, all over the wall with all these different specks and dots of paint. And that's Gemini. <laughs> Um, okay, so non-linearity, <laughs> as I think my speech is, is, is exemplifying, what else we got? Um, Mercury, Trine, Pluto. So uh, this is what I was talking about with these like energies kind of blurring underneath the surface, right? The Gemini is so easy, breezy, beautiful, but we have this like, um, Mercury trying to Pluto and then Venus square to Pluto, um, right happening next to each other. So the middle of this week, Pluto is like resurfacing, right? Pluto is coming back around to influence us. I mean, you know, to get, to get his, his energy in there. This Mercury trying Pluto, I mean, I have a card for it here, but this Mercury trying Pluto, I don't think is, this is where there's a spectrum. Okay. So for the people who are still really struggling to integrate from the Pluto 
the Pluto, the Scorpio full moon, right? The recent eclipse we just had, the one that put everybody on their asses, right? If you're still struggling to integrate this, this Mercury trine Pluto is going to allow you to pull and purge like anything that is still like stuck and stagnant inside of your mind. And in fact, Pluto was going to try and Mercury is going to try and Pluto one more time, one more time once Mercury stations direct, right? So it's going to be this like continuous like Pluto, like plucking, 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 plucking. Um, but I feel that for most of us who are um, either just getting through the integration process or are already feeling really good, um, that this is going to be more of like a, it's like a sexy boost, right? A sexy boost because we have Mercury trying Pluto and Venus square Pluto. This could, it could just be like a great, great, great time to have some fun doing something that you find physically enjoyable and like feeling beautiful, feeling sexy, just doing something awesome, right? If you can tune into that, that's what this, this Pluto influence in the middle of the week, that's what that could be for you if you allow it. Um, but if you're not there, then that's okay. It's going to be this um, still helping you conclude the healing. Okay, yeah, King of Pentacles. That was... <laughs> confirming what I was saying about, right? Do something that you find fun and enjoyable and sexy and pleasurable in your physical body, right? Do something fun in your physical body because um, Pluto can really bring you that kind of power if you allow it to, right? If, if like Pluto will make you do shadow work in like the worst kind of way if the shadows are relevant to be played with right now, right? But so many of us are in this really wonderful position where we just did like some seriously deep shadow work, you know, last week, right? Over the last month, we just did it. So that means that we're kind of in this new, fresher state of free and clear, and it means that we can find more enjoyment in things. That's why I feel it's really important to capitalize on this Gemini season. Just keep tuning into the higher frequencies. And honestly, guys, I would say like, if, if you wonder about spiritual bypassing, right? I know that's like a big thing on Instagram, at least it was when I used to go on Instagram, everyone all worrying about spiritual bypassing. And I would say, okay, I mean, the spiritual bypassing can be a problem and does happen. Um, you know, that that's, that's a real thing. Um, but I, I would invite you this month, even if spiritual bypassing is something you worry about, try running an experiment for the rest of Gemini season. And just what happens if you just don't care about it? <laughs> what happens if you just go, hmm, okay, I'm going to take a break from worrying about spiritual bypassing. Uh, I, I'm just going to write that off for the rest of the month. And I'm just going to bypass everything. What if I like, well, what, what'll happen, right? What happens if you just focus on the positive, focus on the best, focus on the highest, right? Just do, do the bypassing, like, and just see what happens, right? Maybe it won't really be this big, horrible, you know, irresponsible thing. Maybe it's going to be exactly what you need, right? And it's like, <sighs> this would be a perfect time, right? Be a perfect time the rest of this month to put down your responsibilities, put down your burdens, put down your worries and just live the good life, right? The problems are gonna come back around. You're gonna have more opportunities later to focus on whatever it is that you're worrying about. Really, if you can take Gemini season to just live it up, it will be so enjoyable for you. <laughs> Let's see what else is happening. Yeah, and then on this Saturday, Venus is entering Taurus, which that's beautiful. That is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Venus rules Taurus, right? Oh, sorry, kicking my, you know, punching it, punching my camera. Um, Venus rules Taurus. That's going to be bringing even more pleasure, right? More pleasure into the physical realm. That is very sexy placement. It, it, it's, you know, allow yourself to live the good life. Do what feels good. Have fun. Do something just for fun, you know? Like this could spend $150 on like a purple wig if you want, right? This is that type of thing. Six of cups. Interesting. This particular six of cups has all of these photos on the wall. To me, this reminds me of like a vision board. What do you want to create for the rest of your rest of this Gemini season, right? What do you want to create? What do you want to focus on? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be? How do you want to live? You can have it if you can just allow yourself to have it. And the trick is to lean into the chaotic expression of Gemini. Okay. The chaotic expression of Gemini. Gemini can be a little bit linear in its like lower forms. Right. Um, but 
mm, that's not the highest energy for us to be tuning into right now, right? Like I keep talking about this splatter, this paint splatter, this random um, generation of stuff all over the place, right? Um, that type of Gemini energy, it's non-linear, right? The, those splats of paint, they all kind of exploded there all at once. They weren't like drawn like one at a time by a line, right? Um, so the, I'm talking about this because I, I want to invite you to stop asking how. <laughs> Things like, how do I do it? How do I do it? How? How do I do it? Those questions, right? Um, don't really have answers. <laughs> I feel like um, that that's that's going to be a theme, right? The the more you find yourself asking, how do I do it? How do I get there? How 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 do I do this thing? How do I stop doing this thing? The more you ask how how to how to, the more you type into Google how to. This is this is not the time for that. This energy does not support that. Um, th this is because the only answer is just do it, right? For for this month, this Gemini season, the ans answer to how to do it is just do it. Just do it. Be like a Nike commercial, right? Just do it. Just do it. Um, and this is a non-linear experience, right? How to do something, the steps on how to do something, that is the linear experience. We're not in there right now. <laughs> right now we're in this non-linear experience and so it's like how how to get from A to B, you just do it. There there is no path to navigate. You can't you can't get there in a linear fashion. You just have to allow your energy to shift. Um and so of course now you're thinking, well how do I do that? How do I just do it? Um so this is this is going to be the thing. This is going to be the thing for the rest of the month that we're all going to have to be like reckoning with. And luckily, I think this is really this is a really fun problem to have. This is fun. This is exciting. This is just pure consciousness at its best, right? This isn't like deep dark shadow work with a Scorpio full moon blood moon eclipse, right? No, this is just allowing your yourself to shift because remember Gemini is mutable air energy, right? So it's shifting, shifting, shifting. It's something different all the time, but all of those things that it is is authentic in that moment. So Ha, like, and this, this whole thing about a lot, just simply just do it, just do it, allow your energy to simply shift. That is important because that is how we navigate the higher realms, right? That is how we navigate 5D, right? That is, that is how we navigate the quantum, however you want to look at it, right? Those states of consciousness, the, the, those states of experiences that we all want, or, you know, most of us are all looking forward to having um, as we rise above like this linear human experience, right? We, we want to be able to navigate the quantum. We want to be able to like teleport to another planet, stuff like that, right? You want to be able to actually put your body through a portal and like go places, right? It, it, that it, that type of you know the starseed daydream right the starseed daydreaming about about what um what our life experience could be like that experience um it's like so if you're not jumping through a portal at the foot of your bed to go portal to another planet right if that isn't happening for you and i mean that doesn't happen for me either not in my physical body right <laughs> if that's not happening for you that is because you have not yet remembered and remastered how to sh simply allow your frequency to shift like that so I'm talking about this because this is why this is important. This is why this is why we're in this type of training. This is why how to isn't going to work. This is because we need to learn how to just do it. We need to learn how to simply allow our frequency to just shift in a moment, in a moment to exactly the frequency that we want it to be. And we start this. We start practicing this um, because if you were to jump through a portal, right, to another planet, you would have to allow your frequency to shift massively because imagine how different the energy is going to be on that other planet or even just a different point part on this planet, right? It is a huge, massive frequency shift and it could, you know, be extremely destabilizing, disorienting and make you physically ill if you were to, like, if you can't shift that fast, then you're going to be in this state of dissonance, right? You need to allow your energy to shift to match the energy that's right in front of you. Right. I think, you know, jet lag isn't just jet lag. Jet lag is also like an energy discrepancy, right? Because you've traveled so fast, even though planes are still a linear trajectory, right? You still f fly through the earth grids. You're traveling very, very fast. And, you know, you can wait, you can fall asleep on the plane, wake up on the other side of the planet. And now you're all jet lagged. And it's not just because the time zones are off. It is because the geolocational energy in that new place is extremely different from where you just were. 
and you have to adjust to that and it's like nobody really realizes that that's what they're doing when they're jet lagged it's that you're actually trying to acclimate to the new energy and people who don't really get jet lagged are very very good at allowing their frequency to shift to their current location right to their current location and um so <laughs> in this non-linear way, I'm trying to talk and see, I'm talking around my point. This, you're going to see people doing this a lot, especially while Mercury is still in retrograde. People are talking around their points, um, trying to present things to you, trying to communicate by like miming you a play or by showing you stuff. It's going to, it's getting more difficult to linearize verbal language. So anyway, this whole thing about uh, just do it, just allow your frequency to shift. It is important because if you want to teleport to the other side of the planet, you have to be, allow your frequency to shift to that shift to where you're going right you have to you have to be able to match where you're going and so we practice this with our emotions right we practice this with our emotions when we end up in a low frequency state we're depressed we're in despair we're frustrated or angry with whatever it is right and it's like how do you get yourself out of that that isn't that that's the trick right how do you get yourself out of it um the the how to of course there are tips and tricks and strategies and things you can try that, that, that do help you shift your frequency, right? Going out in nature, watching something funny, like going to hug your dog, stuff like that. Those can all help. Um, but those are tools you are using to help you shift your frequency, to help you just shift your frequency. And the more practice you get at that, get at this, eventually you get to the point where you can be like depressed or in the depths of despair or whatever your, whatever your frequency state is. And you can flip the switch and you can pull yourself out of it in like a matter of minutes or even instantly you can bam you can bam you can shift your frequency that fast and i say this because i i i have some success with this right i have been struggling my whole life my whole life my whole whole life um with you know my with mood swings and just low frequency states and all that and i realized my entire life was training me to simply shift my frequency like that to bam to shift my emotions into a better feeling state i was practicing this and i'm still practicing this and i have much greater success now it's not perfect it's not all the time sometimes you know i'm in the dumpster for a few days and i can't shift out of it but still right getting way better than i was at just shifting my frequency and that that's just going to continue, right? That is just going to continue. All these lessons, they are all geared at teaching us to be responsible for our own frequency and teaching us to simply, to just do it. Teaching us to simply shift our frequency to where we want it to be. Um, not only because once we can do that, then if we have, if we can shift our emotions like that, if, if you know, if you can wake up in the morning and put your emotional state where you want it to be, if you can locate your desired emotional frequency and then just lock it in and then if you get destabilized it's fine because you just lock it back in right first we do that we we do that with our emotions and then and then the quantum is open to us right because then it's like you want to become a rock star <laughs> you've never played guitar before you want to be like a guitar god you can shift your frequency it's like it's almost like in the matrix right when you download you like call up and be like yeah i want to be a, like a guitar god i want to download guitar skills right and then they like you download it in right just in the, in the matrix movie same type of thing can happen if you can shift your frequency right you want to be fantastic at something you simply shift into the frequency of already being fantastic at something right and then if you want to travel to your hometown and you're a world away you just hold the frequency of your hometown inside of you and then you find yourself actually there, right? So it's all about um, matching the frequency that you want to find yourself in. And that is truly going to be the lesson of Gemini season, right? Hold your frequency, hold your frequency. If you are where you want to be, if you're already where you want to be, hold your frequency. If you're not where you want to be, hold the frequency of where you want to be and just do it, just do it. Because the linearized steps of how to do it, how to, how to, you know, the internet is full of how to do this. It's not going to cut it anymore. That stuff is going to start to sound absurd because there is no how to, right? H how do you shift your frequency to match some point on the other side of the planet, right? You you just have to just do it. There There is no like, <laughs> you know, the, the, there is no ABC of how to do it. There is only holding the frequency of it. And like, it, this is just something that we all have to experience security this is inside of a cave right we have a cave painting here this is the hearth fire this is feeling good where you are right uh, with <laughs> this is a return to that this is what we need right tara season was 
not a lot of security for a lot of people, right? D different things triggered your insecurities in different ways. Returning to the security, right? Returning to the cave, returning to the family, returning to your present environment, right? Returning to your present environment, returning to who you are, returning to where you came from. Firelit cave. In ancient times, our forebears took refuge in caves. It was there that they could seek shelter from the weather and be protected from predators and enemies. The cave offered a safe place to prepare food, sleep, heal, and build community. Caves were also the places where sacred spiritual ceremonies occurred, evidenced by cave drawings and altars that had been built along the ledges. Symbolically, caves often represented a secret pathway to the underworld, the divine womb of the mother, and the sacred heart. Also, caves can be energy portals for shamans or other spiritual explorers. The sacred landscape wants you to know. You are safe and protected. No matter what is occurring in your life, you are in safe hands. Those in the realm of spirit are watching over you. You can relax and let go. Once you've taken measures to protect yourself and those you love, such as making sure everyone has their seatbelts on in the car, making sure your insurance is paid on time, or replacing the filter on your heating unit, then let go. Then let go. If you have been hyper vigilant lately, take a break. Relax. Know that all is well. You can turn it all over to the Creator. <sighs> yes, guys. Yes, security that frequency is available for you right now, right now. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.